Hello, my name is Y Lam, and today we're going to be taking a look at the TBS Power Cube. When you get your Power Cube, it comes in this nice black box, so it's pretty well protected during shipping. Go ahead and open it up, and what you see first is the bag with all of your wiring, and then in the bubble wrap is the Power Cube. So if we open this up, We go ahead and see this little power cube right here. It's actually uh, smaller than I thought, so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at each of these boards and what they do, and also what type of cabling comes with it. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the wires that comes in this bag right here. Oddly enough, I just noticed that the uh, Team Black Sheep logo is actually printed onto this bag, so uh, it's not something that you see very often, that's all. Go ahead and open this up. And I already uh, took a look at the manuals to see what kind of wires that we have. And uh, so I think I know where most of these go. So we'll just get the easy ones out of the way. Five volt wire to go to your video transmitter. We're actually not gonna use this one because the video transmitter that we're gonna use can accept all the way up to, you know, uh, four cell easily. So. We're actually just going to go ahead and use the uh, 12 volt one. But if you have a 5 volt VTX, you can use uh, this wire right here. This one here is for your 12 volt camera. Uh, a lot of cameras nowadays also can work on 5 volts. And uh, the camera that we're going to be using actually works on 5 volts. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to modify this cable a little bit to work with the uh, video transmitter. But uh, that's just for our custom use. But Right out of the box, there's a 5 volt for the VTX and a 12 volt for your uh, camera. This wire right here is, it looks, it's a 4 pin to go to a standard servo. And this one most likely will go to your UART right here, which uh, we're not going to be using, but uh, it'll actually fit. I'm pretty sure it'll fit right in here. like so. Uh, this is actually not one of the uh, cables that we're going to be using. So uh, it fits in the UART1. Uh, that's what's actually printed onto the flight controller. Uh, we're not going to be using this cable but it fits in right there. Next cable we're going to be looking at is the buzzer. So it has the uh, 3 volt buzzer already soldered on and uh, ready to go which is really nice because these buzzers come in really handy and having this already completely done for you really nice feature so let's go ahead and take a look at the buzzer right here so that plugs in right here okay let's have it upside down there we go so that's the buzzer uh, this will we won't use uh, this right here is uh, it's a four pin on uh, the side that goes into the flight controller. It's three pin coming out. And this wire we're actually going to be using with uh, something like a satellite receiver. Uh, so it's something that we can use on your uh, your, receive, your receiver for your uh, radio system. So we'll go ahead and get that plugged in. So the receiver port's right here. Okay, give me a second. There we go. And then you can go ahead and plug it into your satellite receiver like this. So, like so. And this wire, this is the last wire besides these two over here, which we're not going to use right now, is for your LEDs. So if you have some programmable LEDs, you can go ahead and solder these parts up to your LED board and then it'll plug into this slot right here. Oh, sorry, other, other side, this slot on this side. So you can go ahead and plug it up. And there you go. Now these wires, I'll go ahead and I'll plug them in. They'll actually plug into the bottom. So at the very bottom of this uh, cube stack is actually the power distribution board and there are regulators at the bottom. So there's regulation for a 12 volt clean power and a 5 volt clean power. So if you wanted to use those, 
you can go ahead and plug them up down here. Go ahead and just show that real quick. Just making sure that I have the right ones plugged in. Okay, oops. So interesting thing about this is that you can actually plug in the wires wrong on the power distribution board. You actually have to look on the board right here up on top and it'll actually have a marking that says VTX and the other side says uh, cam. So you want to take your cam one and put it on the cam side because that's actually the 12 volt power. Because these wires are essentially the same. So that's 12 volt power and I know that uh, based on the label even though it's, it's essentially the same wire but you just want your labeling to be correct so that you don't uh, accidentally feed you know uh, uh, extra voltage to some component that actually cannot take that much and then there we go and then we can have 5 volts coming out on the other side so this that's the entire power cube wired up so the two inputs that we currently aren't using right now uh, this one over here is for your GPS and uh, other sensors and this one is a IR LED late, uh, uh, sense or actually yeah no it's a transmitter so it's an IR LED transmitter and this one is for um, basically for um, things like the iLAP system in which uh, it's used for racing essentially so you can actually hook it up and then you can uh, actually use uh, specific race systems. I'm not sure exactly what uh, race system that they intend this to be used for, but it's a nice feature to have for people who want to use these type of power cubes for specific racing applications. If you look down here, there's actually a button right here, and uh, this button, I think it's a button, is to, uh, for the rebooting of uh, this particular power cube. I'm fairly certain that's a button and you can also solder on some servo pins on this side but uh, you, you'll have to solder them on yourself. So we just got done looking at all of the wires. Um, the next thing that we're going to look at is actually the power cube itself. So at the very top is the flight controller. Um, it's an F3 flight controller and it does have a little boot button for uh, reloading firmware and whatnot. Um, it looks to be a very nice flight controller, but only time will tell because you just need to fly it in order to really know. Uh, right below them are the four ESCs, and what they're doing is they're alternating where these, uh, these basically these uh, plugs come to uh, plug into your motors. So the first ESC is the, uh, the one uh, right below the flight controller. So it's ESC1, ESC2, ESC3, ESC4. ESC1, the plugs are in the back because if you look at clean flight, uh, the first motor is actually on the uh, back right, so it would plug in here, and then the second motor is up here in the front. So alternating uh, the ESCs makes a lot of sense because you'll plug this one in on this side, and then ESC2's plugs are on over here, and then you'll plug this one on that side. And then three is back here. This one will go to, over to the back left. And then the last ESC will go to the front left. So essentially, uh, by alternating them, uh, the plugs are all going into the proper direction. Uh, there is an arrow right up front here telling you that's the front of the flight controller and the XT60 uh, cable is pointed to the back. USB is on the side, which is really nice because on most uh, quads, the sides are the easiest ways to be able to plug in your USB cable. Uh, there should be native support for this USB driver, but uh, only time will tell. I haven't actually plugged this power cube in, but uh, it looks to be pretty good. At the very bottom is the power distribution board with the uh, volt filters. So it can filter for 5 volts and it can filter for 12 volts. And then at the very bottom of this is actually a uh, protector to keep all of the power out of your quad. So this is actually a plastic piece uh, at the very bottom and it's designed so that you don't short out the power cube. The reason why they do that is if you look up top here, you'll notice there's a positive and then on the other side there's a negative. This side's positive, that side's negative. 
essentially what they did is that they made it so that these uh, the stacks on the side is where all of your power and all of your grounds are running through and that makes a lot of sense because if you're going to stack all these ESCs like that it's going to be drawing a lot of power through this XT60 cable so you want to ensure you have plenty of um, you know plenty of wire to be able to channel all of that power and all of that ground and having it uh, right here on this stack uh, right here is essentially it's a good way of making it small and efficient um, the only downside to that is what you'll see down here is that the positives one over here and the other one over here they obviously can't ground to the frame otherwise you're going to create a short right so essentially you won't be able to bolt all four sides onto your frame you can only bolt the sides that are ground so positive positive negative negative so the negative sides will have bolts in which you can use and you can actually screw it into your uh, quad uh, the base plate of your quad to compensate for not having those screws what they did is they put velcro or 3m tape down here so that you can stick uh, the power cube base onto the quad and then use these two screws as reinforcement so that's uh, personally it's a uh, it's not a bad design but um, like it, it's definitely different right so I'm not sure if this is the best design in the world again only time will tell but it's something that you should note uh, the ESCs in here uh, they're rated uh, for 20 amps they can go up to 30 amps continuous if there's good airflow and then it can uh, it says it can burst up to 45 amps for a short period of time I think it's 10 seconds but don't quote me on that interesting thing about this is and I was reading the manual about this is that the power distribution board is rated for 100 amps continuous bursting up to 150 amps if you were to use 30 amps continuous that would obviously be above the 100 uh, the 100 amp continuous it would be actually going up to the 100 closer to the 150 amps so it's one of those things where I'm sure the board can actually handle it if you were drawing 30 amps on all of these ESCs for you know an extended period of time but I just find it funny that uh, in the instructions where the power distribution board isn't actually able to handle technically in its ratings uh, on the manual to be able to handle all of these ESCs drawing at 30 amps. So it's just something for you to think about because uh, uh, our intent is actually to put this into a quad and actually to push this to see how how hard we can push it because this is the really the first design that I saw that's really quality from a uh, manufacturer that's really reputable so we, we really want to see if uh, we can actually push this and if it's actually good enough because if it is this is a really good design it's a very simple design and it makes quad building somewhat more accessible to people who don't really want to learn about all of the intricacies of every component so we're not going to go over every specifications of this power cube. You can easily look it up and I personally don't really care to know about everything about this power cube because essentially uh, the way that's designed, it's designed to the point where you don't really need to know everything about this power cube. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually use this power cube for this quad build right here. And this quad build is going to be specifically for a 6 cell battery. Like I said, when we first uh, uh, talked about in the video, we really want to push this power cube to see, uh, to see how well it is. Because if it actually does a really good job and actually holds up, uh, it would make quad building a whole lot easier. And, you know, it's going to make uh, it accessible to more people. There's a lot of people out there that actually want to get into this uh, specific hobby but they might not want to be able to do all of these things of soldering and figuring out each component and trying to figure out what goes with what so being able to have this nice little small package and then connecting it to a uh, video transmitter and then just having power hopefully the tuning won't be too bad um, it's actually uh, it's actually a pretty good idea now having said all that uh, this power cube, just thinking about it in general, might actually, there might not be a market that's mature enough for it. So hopefully it does sell well. 
but uh, in terms of quad building and just uh, this as a mainstream hobby, it really hasn't reached that yet. It's getting there. So I'm hoping that these uh, will sell well enough and they'll continue improving upon this to the point that, you know, when, you know, more people are interested that this will actually be a uh, much refined or much better, much more refined technology. Uh, but as of right now, uh, it looks pretty good. We're going to go ahead and put it in this quad. Uh, we're going to make a few modifications. Um, the 12 volt power, we're actually going to run 12 volt power to this power distribution board. And by doing that, um, we don't, uh, we have plenty of uh, clean 12 volt power to power things like LEDs, our video transmitters, and whatnot. So that's going to be something that's a little different. We're actually not going to use the 5 volt at all. We're going to run the 12 volt to this power distribution board and then use the power distribution board on the alien to power everything else we need. Uh, obviously, it's uh, running on a 6 cell battery, or that's the intent of it. So um, nothing that we're going to plug up besides the power cube can take, well, the video transmitter might, but uh, nothing is going to take a direct 6 cell battery. We're going to go ahead and filter all of the power into the power cube's uh, distribution board and let it uh, handle all of the power, and we'll see how well it does. Uh, hopefully it does well. Uh, only time will tell. This is kind of just a short introductory video. And uh, when we're actually done building this, when we have this cube in here and we have all of the components ready to fly, we'll go ahead and update you on a video on this. But uh, this should be a, a pretty fun build and a pretty uh, nippy little quad once we're done. So one last thought before we wrap up this video. Um, and the thought about it is that while the hardware is getting a lot simpler, I'm not sure if we're actually paying attention to the software side. Now, I wouldn't call clean flight to be very difficult to use, but it's really not beginner friendly either. So it's one of those things where if you look at this quad right here, which actually uses a DJI flight controller, if you've ever used their software and their hardware, it's actually really easy to put together. You almost can't uh, do it wrong. Uh, there are you know one or two things you can do wrong, but most of the things are proprietary plugged together and the software I mean, it's not very configurable, but it's really easy to understand and, you know, just a few YouTube videos and you'll be up and flying and it's very easy to fly. We almost need to get to, um, you know, a different point, but uh, something similar to what DJI is doing in which, you know, like clean flight needs to have like a beginner mode in which you're just going to get a nice basic tune. It might not get 100% efficiency from your quad, but it'll get good enough, it's smooth enough to where most beginners will be more than happy to fly that for a long period of time before having to switch over to a more advanced uh, clean flight. So that's just kind of uh, my thoughts on that. Hopefully somebody's uh, paying attention to the software as much as uh, you know TBS is playing it, paying attention to the hardware. Uh, that's really it. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave in the comments below. Until next time, thank you for watching.